going to do part two of my painting the lorikeets that's an australian bird in the parrot family that you'll find in australia it's a little smaller than a parrot very colorful and just as noisy as it is colorful when i was there i would often hear them especially early in the morning when i'm outside enjoying the sunshine i could hear them loud and clear but I could never find where the noise was coming from. It was so interesting. So they're a little elusive also. And if there's a whole bunch of them in a tree, you hear so much noise, you can hardly hear yourself talk or hear the other person talk. But, and you can see shadows of them because it would be dusk, but you couldn't see them. But this is how beautiful they are. See all the colors? I'm gonna try to mimic the colors in my painting and I uh, hope you paint along as you watch. Okay, so this is gonna be part two. I did sketch them in, you can't see it really that well, but I sketched them in with chalk. And I'm gonna put out my colors now. I'm gonna put out uh, some dioxazine purple, and that will be my under color for the heads because the heads are a really pretty, soft, periwinkle type blue. I'm gonna bring, put out some Prussian blue hue. Of course, I'll need some titanium white. Put that out too. I'll be mixing everything with that. And I'm going to need some cadmium yellow. Some cadmium red. I'm using um, heavy body paints, mostly uh, golden, some Liquitex, and my cad red is Matisse. I'm gonna put out a little quinacridone red. I think I'll darken the beak a little bit with that. And some phthalo green that I still have on hand. Might as well use it. And let's see. Maybe I was thinking maybe, not sure. Well, let's leave it at that for a while and see how that turns out. I was thinking about maybe ultramarine blue, but I'm not sure about that. 
So let's see how this turns out. I'm going to start with a little bit of an undercolor for the heads. I'm going to do all of them with similar heads. There are many types of lorikeets, so I learned a lot uh, looking those up. Some of them are more, uh, you'll find more in the islands near Australia, not far from Australia. Some of them you'll find more in Australia, some more on the western part of Australia, and um, some on the eastern side. So um, you'll find the different uh, families in the different regions in that area. The different kinds have a little bit of a different color in the collar section. Some of them have a darker color um, more of a color that's, that goes with the name of the type of lorikeet. So it's very interesting when you get into these, and I'm starting to appreciate nature a little bit more than I used to. Um, I think part of it just goes with looking at pictures and getting inspired uh, for your art, for my art anyway, but I, I don't think I'm by myself in that. I start appreciating things a little bit differently than I used to. I, I look up at trees when I'm in the car. I look up at clouds. Um, I don't remember doing that so much before. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and paint where the eye would be anyway, because that's going to have some color too, you know, so I'm not going to worry about the leaving a space for the eye. It's not like they have white irises like we do. They actually have, these particular ones actually have the uh, bright uh, reddish orange iris anyway. So. I think I need a smaller brush for this detail, a little bit smaller than the brush I was using. I have my assortment of brushes, and they're all kind of small. So whatever it calls for, that's what I'm going to be using. I'm wetting my brush a little, and I'm going in the dioxanine purple. The beak is going to be a bright uh, reddish or orangey red, very similar to cad red anyway. So I probably could just use a straight cad red for that, but just for variation, I might darken or shade some of the beak with the quinacridone. Okay. Very friendly looking bird. I'm taking off the edges that, that don't look so friendly. Um, as I paint, I don't want anything to look like an eagle would look, you know, with the curvy corners and everything. So I'm trying to keep it having that friendly, friendly look that they have. And then I'm going to use this one to kind of wipe this off a touch so I can have more room for the collar, which is a completely different color. These are called rainbow lorikeets. And the colors is just they don't blend into each other. It's, it's amazing. They just, they look like I would have made these birds up, you know? Not like they're really, but they really are, they really do have this very dramatic look. So I'm going to square the head off just a little bit. All right.
I'm going to do the same thing with the other birds. Put the uh, dark purple under color here. And then I'm going to paint over that with the feathers so that it doesn't look so flat. And it has, you know, if I just painted the heads blue, that light blue, and that's it, it wouldn't look like they had feathers. So I'm setting it up so that I can get that look. chalk line is pretty faint so I think I'm following it correctly 